today I am driving into Johnson to tell a story about an unusual set of businesses, all of which are connected to an increasingly well-known nonprofit called Jenna's Promise. Now, this story is a very emotionally heavy one. It is an unconventional one when I think about the context of small Vermont businesses. And my hope is that I can do it justice. This is the story of Jenna's Promise. So I'm Dawn Tatro. Our daughter, um, Jenna, struggled with uh, opiate um, addiction uh, for six years. It happened when she was prescribed uh, Oxycontin in an emergency room um, with not even a broken bone, but she was given it. And that really started this, uh, um, this addiction and it just kept spiraling out of control. We lost Jenna to an overdose. She had said that she wanted to help others and now we are carrying on her promise. I'm here to tell the story of a set of small businesses all connected to the nonprofit that is Jenna's Promise. Now the small businesses associated with Jenna's Promise are here to support Jenna's Promise to provide financial support for it, but also to give the participants of the program job skills so that they can re-enter the workforce in a meaningful way, and also a sense of purpose, sense of place. It's a totally unconventional way to approach small businesses, but I think it's worthwhile to look at and to examine. How did they all get started to begin with? Who underwrote it? How did it happen? Well, Don and I underwrote it. We've donated, I don't know, probably a million and a half dollars to this cost since we started. I kind of lost track and it doesn't really matter to me because we're rebuilding people or giving them the opportunity to rebuild themselves. Mm -hmm. When you're kind of down and out and things are rough, you know, going to work is actually a, a break. And uh, so we want folks that coming out of uh, hard addictions to, uh, work on their recovery first, but then they need a reason to feel good about themselves. So we created a few different businesses in town. My name is Andrew Bunting. I run the coffee roastery here, which is Jenna's Promise Roasting Company. It's one of our social enterprises. We uh, teach these women some really awesome skills to get out into the workplace mm -hmm. and um, I'd just be comfortable and listen to some music and have kind of a fun time. People in recovery you can't, you know, you're not going to go out to a bar and drink, but there's a lot of coffee at a lot of these meetings and it's a way of getting together with somebody. It's a way of, you know, having a drink and connecting. How's that work experience been for you? Oh, it's been fantastic. That's why we need to break down the stigma because honestly, everybody who's ever come in here has been like extremely helpful. We work cohesively together. So it's just kind of using that and then showing another future employer that they have these skills. My name is Haley Wilkinson. I am JP's store manager. This place was created so the women would have a stepping stone, a place to start work, getting back out into society. And how did you get involved? I personally was in rehab. I was in sober living in Florida, and I was a little nervous to come back to my hometown. And Don and Greg actually helped my boyfriend and I get sober, get on, go get into de detox and get help. This place opened up. By the time I was ready, I called Dawn and she said that there would be a place for me here. And what's your position here now at Jenna's Promising Goods? I slowly moved up from moving furniture to running the rummage sale to being the assistant store manager. And now, as of a few months ago, I am the store manager. It's all profits from uh, the coffee roast in the store, the appliance sales and uh, 
go right back to Jenna's promise. We are trying to be uh, sustainable for the long haul. I hope that this lasts for decades, and if that's what it takes to, you know, help people after I'm long gone, then shoot, I'm up for that challenge any day. You know, we didn't get to finish the journey with Jenna, and uh, so now we put our energy towards finishing, helping people finish their journeys. There were so many people who, through corporate greed and the lack of governmental regulation and oversight and just through crime. There's no other way of putting it. It's crime. It's criminal. That so many people have lost their lives and so many people have lost their loved ones. And every day that I get to go around and do what I do, which I feel so blessed about my life, is a day that so many people do not. One of the things I've seen Dawn do, and it's heart-wrenching actually, is she'll say, I believe in you. And some of these women will say, nobody's ever told me that my entire life. We just want people to understand that once you pull the veil off uh, these folks to the veil of addiction, that uh, they're no different than you or I. So if customers can reduce their stigma and say, gosh, you know, I didn't realize you were you were in such trouble and, and look at you now. It makes us proud to, to be a part of that journey. Being a part of Jenna's Promise, even back when I was doing just like the rubbish sale of the furniture, gave me a purpose. And now being in the role that I'm in, um, I feel like I'm a decent role model to these other young ladies that are newly sober because I've, I've been there, I've done that. Um, and I feel like I try to show like a little bit of hope and strength to these women. Cory Booker once said that, you know, pain can become purpose. Yeah. Right? And I think that that is embodied in Jenna's promise. You have Jenna as the beginning of this. Yeah. And then the promise that that holds mm -hmm. and, and the promise that she made, right? And so the family is taking on that promise. I think a lot of people believe that Jenna's still with us. And, you know, I feel her. Some days I feel her and, and uh, you know, I know she's watching and I think she's smiling, knowing that her sacrifice, because that's what it was, honestly, uh, has helped so many other people. So this is the story of Jenna's promise. Even though Jenna Tetro is no longer with us here on Earth, the promise of her potential lives on through this organization, and the promise that the Tetro family has made to Jenna and carrying on her legacy and her spirit, that all of that is embodied within this organization and within the small businesses around it. So much wrong has been wrought on our country and on people who did not deserve to suffer the way that they have. And I feel that organizations like Jenna's Promise are modeling out a path forward for us to find productive, constructive solutions to healing. It's been a tremendous honor to be able to spend time with the Tetro family and Jenna's Promise and the community of Johnson. And I am really inspired by this idea that even pain and suffering can be turned into something beautiful, profound, and positive.